Let's start with the thought experiment. Imagine that our universe is infinite and expanse, with particles distributed roughly equally around the space. What will such a universe be like? First, because there are only so many ways to arrange particles together in a certain area of space. Given enough chance, everything that can happen under the laws of physics will happen in the infinite universe. This will happen an infinite amount of times for every moment that has passed and every moment that is to come. Every moment you'll be listening to this talk an infinite amount of times. An infinite number of you will be listening to me rambling about how many times you'll listen to me rambling about you forever. In fact, light years away, you would have already listened to this talk an infinite number of times. Because all the possible particle arrangements are realized, almost all the books and movies and TV shows that we enjoy would occur in, in reality infinitely from the start of the universe till its end. And all of our life, all that we experience, how every regret and every triumph, every love and every hate, every smile and every tear will occur and reoccur eternally. Your birth and your death, the day you enter college and the day that you graduate, the day of your marriage and the day when your first child is born, will all in this infinite universe play out in symphony for the eons before and the eons to come. Your life is of infinite size and span across an infinite amount of space. In such a universe, in some sense, we're never dead. We just live and die continually. Doesn't this sound beautiful? Certainly every time I return to my thought experiment, my mind is filled with awe and hope. There's almost something divine and sacred about this infinite universe. I'm not the first to posit such an experiment. Nietzsche also talked about eternal recurrence, the idea that we will forever re-experience the life that we are having now, again and again until infinity. But Nietzsche was not so in love with the idea as I am. He called it the greatest burden. And he said in one of his books that, if this thought were to gain possession of you, it would change you as you are, or perhaps crush you. Nietzsche looked at eternal recurrence with fear, but I believe that we're also justified to embrace it in joy. To me, this kind of infinite universe seems to endow our life with some deeper meaning. For our life, all that we have experienced in an infinite world like this will be unceasing and eternal. This is the dream of the ancient Greeks, when Plato imagined his world of forms. If the universe were really, really so, it would be a pretty wonderful universe. Yes, but what's the point of imagining a world like this? It is fun, but surely it's too absurd a hypothesis to be taken seriously. Actually, you may have already seen this coming from how I've set up this speech. Recent advances in cosmology suggest that this infinite universe may actually be a physical possibility. The theory is called the quilted universe. The entire process of reasoning involves a few brief steps. First, we have to assume that the distribution of matter across the universe is relatively even on a large scale. Actually, Einstein assumed this in his theory of general relativity to make his equations calculable and he named it the cosmological principle. This is by far supported by observation. This ass assumption constrains the shape of the universe into four possible choices, either a sphere, a satellite shape, or two kinds of flat shapes. This is dependent on the curvature of the universe. If the universe is curved positively, it, it will become a sphere. If it is curved negatively, a saddle. But if the universe doesn't curve at all, then it is completely flat, which means that it is either like a Pac-Man screen, where we suddenly get transported to the other side of the universe after stepping out of one of its edges, or a flat plane extending infinitely out. But what determines the curvature of this universe? How will we ever know? One way is to measure the average density of the universe. 
This is because matter warps space in one way or another. The amount of matter in the area will determine whether our universe curves and by how much. Too much matter, then space will curve into a sphere. Too little, it will curve into a saddle. But at the point where we just have enough matter, at about six hydrogen atoms per cubic meter, all the curving forces will balance out and space will be flat. The current data is eerily close to the critical density that is six hydrogen atoms per cubic meter, with 27% of this density observed by traditional methods and another 73% accounted for by dark energy. However, this is still not certain. What we can know for sure is that there is at least a possibility, if not a big one, for the universe to be infinitely large. If so, then we can almost call our universe a multiverse, since the fastest information can travel is at the speed of light. The farthest region of space that is dependent on each other would be around 40 billion light years away. Outside of this circle of 40 billion light years, there will be independent regions that are evolving by itself. They will form a quilt-like shape across the universe, extending infinitely, each evolving by itself. There will be an infinite number of such universes. If this is so, the universe may really concur with our thought experiment. So, what's the takeaway? To be honest, I'm not really too sure myself. But I'll be exceedingly happy if you may sometimes recall this talk and the possibility that all that we do, all that we feel, and all that we experience at this moment may have a greater significance that transcends our Earth and our universe. To just take note that our lives may not be trivial nor fleeting, but eternal. Louis Armstrong once sang, What a wonderful world. And we may be just as well justified in saying, What a wonderful universe.